Hey guys, it's Elena. Welcome back to my Create with Intuition art prompt series for November 2022. So each month we have two different prompts. We have an intuitive prompt and a visual prompt. And for this month, the intuitive prompt is gratitude, somewhat predictably for November, I guess. So I just want you to think about something or someone that you're grateful for and let that be an inspiration to you in your art. And for the visual prompt, we have weather. So stormy weather, sunny weather, anything like that. And I've created a photo collection on Unsplash that you can use for inspiration. So I will just be showing you my interpretation of these prompts. And I decided to use my amazing alcohol ink brush set in Procreate. So I will just go ahead and jump right into that. So I'm going to open up my Create with intuition art journal and this is the piece that I made with the prompts last month and I'm just adding a new page in page assist down here at the bottom so I'm swiping up from the bottom and bringing my unsplash app over to the right and this is the photo collection that I created for this month's prompts with different kinds of weather in it so scrolling through here I really enjoyed the colors of this kind of stormy photo here because we have almost some sunset colors but also lightning, which I felt really inspired by. So in order to use this photo as a reference, I went to the gear icon canvas and turned on reference. And now I tapped on image and from gallery view and unsplash, I'm just dragging that image right into my reference slot. And so with that done, I can go ahead and close the unsplash app so I don't have to keep that open. And I can move that reference photo around the screen and make my canvas a bit smaller so that I can look at that. So I've chosen my alcohol ink brushes for this project. You are welcome to choose any brushes that you have and interpret them in any way that you want to. So I chose color changing number three from my alcohol ink brush set and I've chosen a pink color. And first starting out, I realized that was a bit too big. So I made that brush a bit smaller and I'm just drawing in the corner with some pink. So I'm thinking about what I'm grateful for when I'm doing this. And the first thing that comes to mind, which probably is the same for many people, is my family. So I'm thinking about my family and just letting that be something in the back of my mind um, as I'm just making an abstract art piece. So it's not like I'm trying to draw them um, like an actual representation of them, but I'm just thinking about them and letting them sort of inspire my choices. So with that same brush, I did a yellow spot in the bottom left corner, and now I've changed to color changing brush number 10. And I wanted to add a dark grayish black bit up here by the pink. So I just did that and I'm kind of thinking about these clouds in the picture. And so now I've chosen my smoky brush and very slowly and deliberately, I'm kind of using this brush without lifting up in order to add some bit smoky bits and different colors in the empty spaces here. So this brush actually, um, as you keep drawing, it sort of erases itself. And that can be a fun way to kind of control how much of the alcohol ink effect is on the page. So I'm continuing with that gray color and just kind of bring it in. I felt really inspired by this picture, how there was like this light spot and the lightning coming down and the different colors around it. And I'm very loosely being inspired by that. And I kind of liked how there were three different lightning bolts in this picture because I'm, I have three members of my family that I was thinking of. So to me, that's kind of the inspiration here. So I'm just kind of filling out the colors still with the smoky brush in the purple. And I'm just gonna keep on adding a few more colors all around with the smoky brush. So now I am switching brushes to color splatter and I felt like this dark area needed some pink splatters. So I'm just adding that. And I wanted to have some splatters in a couple of different colors. So I'm just adding that wherever it seems to fit. So now I've chosen the brush called blended brush stroke 
and choosing my dark purple color again. I felt like I wanted to start outlining some different areas. So there is kind of a border between the purple and the yellow here and I just wanted to make that a bit more pronounced. So this is kind of like taking a paintbrush with alcohol ink on it and just dragging that color around. And so I'm choosing a yellow and just doing the same technique on top of that. And again with pink, just dragging that color right on top for kind of a ribbon effect. Now I've chosen my XL Blended Stroke brush, and this is kind of a large version of the same one that has some really nice blending if you do it on top of other colors. So I'm just building up the brush strokes with that large brush stroke there. And I wanted to add some yellow again. I like to use this brush to drag along the edge of a different brush stroke because it blurs it in a really nice way. So at this point I closed the reference photo because it had kind of taken on a life of its own. So I wasn't really being inspired by the reference photo quite so much anymore. So I went back to my blended brush stroke in the dark gray color that I used for this blob up here. And I wanted to just go ahead and add a few lines to this to make it more pronounced as well. It had gotten a bit faded when I was doing the smoky brush, so I just wanted to make it stand out again. So having done that, I chose white and went to my white splatter brush. And I wanted to add some white splatters here and there. So whenever I do this with alcohol ink, it's kind of like just splattering um, regular isopropyl alcohol onto the page so without any color because wherever it drops it just leaves these really perfect circles and it's actually really beautiful to watch it in real life how it just kind of spreads into the circle. So now I've gone to my hair dryer number one brush and using that brush I'm just taking it and from the side of this purple blob dragging it over top to kind of enhance that cloudy look. So now I've taken it from the purple area and dragged it out. And I'm gonna make that brush actually a bit smaller because I felt like that was too big. I get a lot of questions about how to get this look that I'm doing here. And it's basically just making sure the brush is small enough and then controlling it with the pressure going out, lifting up, going out with a little bit less pressure, not as far, and then going out again and just keep doing that with less pressure and less far every time to get kind of like ripply lines. So I'm continuing using the hairdryer brush with light pressure in a couple different areas to just add some blending. So again, just using it to drag out an edge, lifting it and then dragging another edge out, not quite as far, and then continuing to do that further in and further in. So I'm kind of happy with how this is looking a bit cloudy in the middle, a little bit stormy. And I've changed brushes now to my spray blender brush. This is a blender brush and it doesn't add anything to the screen, just like the hairdryer. And I'm just keeping that brush size quite small and just adding a little bit of texture here and there on top of these clouds that I made. So now I'm adding a new layer on top of that and I've selected them both and pressed group. So now they're in a group and they're still on the same page of this, this page assist notebook that I've made here. And I'm just naming that November, 2022. So now I still have the page. I, I wanted to have all of the different um, art prompts kind of like a notebook in this one document. So that's why I've been using page assist. So the new layer that I just added, I named it metallics. And so that's where I'm going to add my metallics. So I chose the foil liner brush. And at this point I was kind of considering what colors I wanted to use for the foil liners and where I wanted to kind of bring in these three bolts of lightning from the reference picture because I had been thinking about three members of my family. So I chose first this kind of goldish color 
and I'm just lining some different areas in the piece with that gold. So at this point I decided I was going to have the three three different colors going up as a lightning bolt from this line that I had made with the blended brush stroke. So I'm trying to make it look a little bit light, like the lightning inspiration by adding some little runoff pieces. So now I wanted to choose a different color and ended up going with more of an orange color this time. So a little bit less pinkish and a little bit more yellow. And again with another lightning bolt up the middle. And I'm just adding a little bit more next to these other lines of foil that I made in the pinker color. So I'm not going on top, I'm just kind of going next to them. And for one more color, I've chosen the dark grayish color, which will come out as kind of a purplish silver. And coming from the other direction to add another lightning bolt. So now that I added that, I'm going to my metallic ink liner and just adding a few sparkles along these lines as I like to do. So I'm going to go back to each color in this brush and continue adding just a bit of sparkle along each of these lines. So when I do this technique, I'm usually thinking about leaving a kind of a wet line of foil. And then I take my finger in and sort of smush it around. And that's kind of what I'm thinking about when I do this technique. And it's just something I like to do with these brushes. I like to combine these two. So at this point, I kind of decided that I wanted to just add some glitter to all these other different places as well and just kind of make this whole line through the middle have this pink glitter on it. So at this point, I decided that I wanted to go back to the alcohol ink layer that's underneath of the metallics. So I went to my layers and I selected that. And then I went to my blended brush stroke with pink selected. And what I wanted to do was to make the end of this yellowish pink line look a bit more blended in with the background. So what I did was I took that brush and I traced along those lines and then brought them up so that it looked more cohesive. So I first did this in pink, kind of tracing along the existing lines. And then I also chose some yellow and continued to do the same thing. So at this point, I wanted to add some pink drops. So I chose the circle dropper brush and with small circular motions, I made some circles underneath of the metallic. So I'm still on the alcohol ink layer and I'm just adding these circles as if I had sort of touched the alcohol ink right onto the page. And sometimes I like to do one right on top of another like that. And I just continued to go ahead and add these little circles underneath to continue making this more of a cohesive area. And I will also go on to do the same thing in yellow as well. And to finish these areas off, I went back to my color splatter brush for some smaller circles and drops and sort of tapped that on the screen in the pink and the yellow around the same area where I had been adding these circles. So that was my abstract interpretation of this month's prompts. And thank you so much for watching. I would love to see what you feel inspired to create. You're very welcome to share in the Facebook group or in my submission form and all of the relevant links are in the description. So thank you and I will see you next time.